and it's going to be adults only, so 21 and older, you won't be able to bring in any beverages, and you can't bring your kids in there, anything like that. But it's going to be um, right next to the music, so people can come in, and they can come in and, and hang out for a while. Um, it's going to be some cool seating. Um, we've got a really, really great beer garden team with lots of new neighbors involved and, and old neighbors too, so that's going to be cool. Um, this year we also did, we wanted to expand the kids zone and the fun zone and um, offer some free things up. So um, we did the carnival section and there's going to be a petting zoo there for two hours. Um, it'll be free. There's going to be a bounce house there for the kids for four hours. Also a really awesome adult obstacle course because we have kids who just have all fun and have a totally torture things. Um, that's going to be free also and we're having a dunk tank and we are getting some um, infamous people to be in it so you can, you know, soak them if you want to for what, $5 for free balls. And the build a balloon guy is going to be wandering around doing free balloon mm -hmm. characters for the kids. So lots of free stuff and it's kind of exciting. Um, there's also going to be a shaded seating area. Um, last year we got a lot of feedback that there was only food and stuff like that. So we are um, getting a lot more tables and chairs and shade structures, so we'll have those up. And then um, rather than a little bus, we're going to have pedicabs to take you from home to home, so that's going to be really fun. And then we do a lot of work on the safety team, um, so the the block watch is going to be set up, but also SWAT's going to be there. Um, the historic fire, fire truck is going to be there. Um, police are going to be there. And they'll be able, you know, anybody can go check it out and do that. Also, ring cameras will be offering a substantial discount to us again. And, um, and um, then there's going to be doing the bike registration again this year. So, you need know, SWAT like, <laughs> Uh, SWAT said that they're going to bring their massive uh, vehicles and equipment there to show off and have the kids able to climb in and get around to uh, Q&A about their SWAT equipment. Yes. Is there an age limit on kids? Say again? Yeah. Is there an age limit on kids? Uh, everybody but you know. No. <laughs> so, no, the vehicles are, are very, very uh, unique as far as their community outreach, but they said that uh, every now and again they try to get into the community and, and just kind of showcase uh, their equipment and, and allow people to do things. I love how excited you are about it. I don't want to get such yeah. a big deal. Really cool. <laughs> we got SWAT! We got SWAT! Yeah, no, anyway. Really okay, you're going to have to push forward a little bit more. Okay. Next slide. Um, so this year the music is going to be incredible. Um, as some of you know, I am involved in porch concert setup, and um, I love music, and I think it just brings the neighborhood together. So um, we're going to not just have the regular bands in the park and the music stage, but we're also going to have pop-up acts along the route. So our music lineup will be mm -hmm. in the park, Mr. Mud, Mr. Gold, they're really awesome. The Blood Feud Family Singers, they just sang in our last porch concert. Um, and Hot House Orchids, which is Mike Logan and John Luther's band, and they're fantastic. Um, along the route is uh, Holly Pyle. She uh, is this incredible jazz musician um, of Kith and Kin, and then Ashley Crichton, who of course lives in our neighborhood. She's a girl from the moon, and got a new, she's got a new CD out, and, and she just has beautiful music. She's also both Holly Pyle and Ashley Crichton. Um, Mr. My Mr. Gold and Hot House Orchids, they've all sung at porch concerts, so we're really excited to have them back and share with the rest of the world all the great music that we have in our neighborhood for some of it. Um, um, as far as costs go, it does cost a lot to put this on, and so um, James and the sponsorship team have really kicked butt going out and getting real sponsors this year so that it doesn't take quite as much of a bite out of us. Um, we have a title sponsor, Don Martins and Historic Phoenix, our title sponsor. Um, the main ingredient was the very first sponsor to sign up for that. We asked Ron, and he's like, I'm all in. He loves the neighborhood, and he loves having everybody over there. That's the brewing company, as I talked about before. Old Republic Home Warranty, um, Phoenix Theater Company, and Phoenix Art Museum, the Car Rocky Del Sol, and Clayton Natural Water, and then also State Farm, and his name is Chuck. Well, Kelly. Kelly. So they're all sponsoring this, which means they're all giving us at least $1,000 to help put on the um, 
the tour, and then some are giving much higher amounts. So it's, it's pretty it's cool mm -hmm. to have that set up. This is what it's gonna maybe sort of look like. Um, this is our layout, and um, we're going to have the ticket sales right here. So this is Palm, this is 12th, and then um, 13th Street. Um, all the vendors are gonna be in the park this time, and um, that's sort of so that they can take advantage of, they get to hear the music also. You know, the carnival's gonna be up off to the left, and the petting zoo will be in the street right there. And then the safety zone will be in all this extra half session. We're not allowed to put anything on the baseball diamond, which is why there's this ball of And, um, you know, obviously people want that, that's totally fine too. The beer garden's gonna be right here. Um, we're also going to have um, bike valets this year. So rather than just pull up and park your bike, there's gonna be valets like we did at Wayne Fest where you check in your bike. Um, we've had Can you several of the tennis court. We don't know if we can or not. If we don't, if we can, we'll use it. But if we can't, then we're gonna just attach fencing to the deer garden because that'll be all fenced in. Um, and then food trucks will be over here. So you can easily access right there, but you're not getting all of the food garbage and that kind of stuff around and then the shade is sitting there. And that's sort of what it's gonna look like. Dunk tank will be in the street. Dunk tank, yeah, sorry, mm -hmm. we'll be in the street because we were told we had to do that. Um, we still need vendors. So we have a lot of vendors, but we have a lot more space this year since we're using the park rather than just the street side. So we still need vendors, and, and they can email either home tour at the corner of the com or vendors at the corner of the com. Okay. And what does that cost? To be a vendor? Uh huh. Um, there's different levels depending on whether you're a nonprofit or a mm -hmm. business and depending okay. on what size you're going to get. All right. So nonprofits start at $40. And then 70. 70. And then we go up if you get um, so a basic space mm -hmm. is one price. And then if you add on a table and chairs, then the price goes up. Um, that's one of the things we had this year that we hadn't had in years past was we didn't offer tables or chairs to mm -hmm. people. And so this year we found a supplier that would give us a good deal. So we could talk about what, that. What have previous vendors said about their um, success or it's all flow different. through? It's all different. It depends on what their product is. Um, this year, we worked really hard to not have competing vendors. Mm -hmm. um, and we wanted to be more locally based, although some products we don't have locally based, so you know we, we expanded out a little bit. We asked some vendors to come in that declined us that were national. We asked, um, what's the? Chipotle. What? The chips? Like yeah, tile yeah tile. we asked Tyler to come in and mm -hmm. they declined. Yeah. Um, but um, we're trying to get things that that people in our neighborhood want, mm -hmm. right, that are interested, that we're interested in, and, and try to get a big variety because not all people are alike. We have a lot of different personalities and a lot of different styles and tastes, and so we want to kind of you know, give a little bit to everybody. Um, mm -hmm. So the streets are still closed. They're all going to be closed off. Yeah, they're going to be closed off starting at 6 a.m. so we can set up and everything. And that's that block of Palm and that block of the Palm 13. Yeah, 12th Street won't be closed off, just the other part. 13th down to Palm area. Palm area. Okay, um, and the last slide just says we need volunteers. We need you. Julie mm -hmm. is our volunteer coordinator. There's lots of to volunteer for, especially after new um, shifts, but there's lots of fun things. So if you haven't already signed up, which I know a lot of have, then please do. Yeah, we need space in the beer garden, we need space in the home host, we need space selling tickets. Um, so we kind of need things for every everything. So if you have an interest in anything specific, please let Julie know and you can show me. And not only do you get that, but you get a really fabulous t shirt. Yes, you get a t-shirt, and also the, the home tour is, what, 10 to 4? Mm -hmm. And so typically shifts are half of that time. So volunteers get free entry to the tour. So you, know, you put in a few hours in the morning, and then you go check out all the houses, check out the bands. Um, so also in the neighborhood safety section, we are uh, offering ring cameras large variety of them at exclusive event pricing. So 
Yes. Mm -hmm. So, <coughs> Selling ring. Selling ring. Selling ring. So yes, ring cameras will be offered there. Uh, last year, ring was one of our sponsors. Uh, just to kind of uh, a testament to the company and, and what they offer for the community. Uh, we installed two of the solar cameras in one of the alleys along uh, Monte Vista around 13th Street. One of the cameras that I installed in that alley was stolen. Interesting on Ring replaced it free of charge. So they are very, very good at not only having the products, but offering the warranties, offering uh, any kind of technical support, and just all around uh, it, the, the platform that they use, uh, the PD uses, a, a lot of the different uh, doorbells and things all interface. So if that is even something that you're remotely interested in, the home tour would be a good time to come and ask questions and pick a couple products up. Yeah, Is the price a secret? Uh, <laughs> I do not have the pack. So they started a program called Event Coordination or, or something or other. So I signed up for the home tour to be part of that, that new pilot program from Ring. Uh, I haven't received any of the promotionals. What this means is that the Block Watch is going to be selling ring products. They're not sending a sponsor. They're not, they're not having any advocate uh, for their product. We're selling it. So I believe it's going to be $40 off per product. I believe. Say again? Well, it really depends on the product. Like uh, a, a Doorbell Pro, I, I believe, with, with the solar panel around $250. So, depending on the products that you buy and the packages that are offered and things, uh, it's going to be all exclusive discounts at the home tour. So, uh, we'll be showcasing what that's going to be once we get the marketing materials. Okay, does anybody have any questions about the home tour? What about all the market, my marketing TV stations? Yeah, so we have a great PR team, um, uh, Cat Profit and... Um, Taylor. Uh, yeah, Taylor, uh, Dally Water. They're, you know, very active in marketing community that's to tell us for a living, and, they, and they've actually filmed a video with Donna Reiner in it, um, so that's going to be put out there. Um, we've done just a little bit on, on Facebook and um, Instagram and those kind of things, and, and popped it out. Um, I think we sent out emails. Um, we, um, in the neighborhood, sent out the postcards that you probably recently got that have information right on the front um, for it. Right, with our Native Association dues. But you'll see a lot more. They've reached out to all of the news stations, all of the um, newspapers, all of the social media platforms. We do a really good job. Advertising we get from you. Yeah. So mm -hmm. spread the word with your friends and family. Pass on the links. You know. We haven't sold a lot of tickets yet. Um, we've sold far less than in past years. <coughs> Who knows why? Um, I think that this year is actually bigger and there's more in it for a um, wide variety of people than in the past. So I think it'll come to fruition. I'm sure it'll be great. And I think that's it. And there's a volunteer sign up sheet back at the back table or mm -hmm. talk to Julie. So thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Uh, so, just real quick, if you haven't been involved in Home Tour, if you're new to the neighborhood, uh, that's a great way to meet neighbors. Um, it's very low stress. Yeah. In the beginning, it's kind of bad, but um, uh, I think it's a lot of fun. Um, it's a great day. Um, it's a great way to showcase our neighborhood and what's making it so special. Um, and it really, uh, to me at least, it makes me feel really good about where I live because all that people are saying, I've heard the neighborhood. Great people. Yeah, absolutely. Great people, yes. So, uh, Tom, I think you're up.
Myself, Michelle Sombrano got together a year and a half, two years ago, and kind of revisioned the community garden, and came up with a mission statement, which the board was, I don't know if they approved it so much as just being made aware of it. So the community garden, and the picture you see here, it's been under development because we have volunteer workers building it uh, for the last uh, 20 months or so. It's going to be done at the end of this month, and we're going to have a garden party on February 9th. Mm -hmm. And that's a very low-key event. There'll be some beer, there'll be some music, uh, but it's just about opening the garden and letting people know it's there. Uh, Joey is uh, creating a monument sign for us, which will be installed at the last half of this month, so on the street you actually say community garden, because a lot of people don't know what it is. It's sort of strolling while we're working, and that's because what's going on. And a lot of people recently have expressed interest there was a Christmas decorating party that was held there. <laughs> 20 people asked about volunteering at the garden. So we're going to put up a whiteboard, and we're going to uh, let people who come, uh, we'll have one or two people that be the guardians of the garden, or whatever they want to call themselves. One of them is raccoon, it's true. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Um, but we'll have them uh, sort of coordinate. They'll be there at certain schedules, and the people who want to come can come, and there'll be tasks to do. There's always work that can be done at the garden. But it's important to you know this is not a community garden uh, like community gardens where you go and you pay $50 and this is your space and whatever, whatever. This is essentially a demonstration garden and a garden that produces produce for uh, neighborhood charities, specifically the Caring Coalition. The produce that we get that SAP can take, it's for them. Uh, we're just doing it so that we can teach people about gardening, teach people about sustainable practices in gardening. We are taking compost. Uh, we're going to set ourselves up to be able to accept compostable materials from the neighbors. So we'll be producing our own compost on site. We have chickens uh, here. So weeds and whatnot get fed to them. And uh, we'll be having classes there. Myself and Doreen uh, Pollock, our neighbors, and obviously the neighbors in Coronado. And uh, we also are adjunct faculty for the community colleges and teach with the garden classes cost, I really don't know what they cost, but uh, we're going to put together uh, a shorter, uh, like four weekend version of that class so people want to learn can come to the garden. These are the things we're doing at the garden, and we're going to try to have a couple events there. I need to transition away from day to day and everything at the garden, so Mark uh, has said he'll be one of the people to step in and help the volunteers. We need another person who really wants to take point. And some of the things that we envisioned when we wrote the mission statement were that this would be an organization, a location where schools could come and also use the outdoor space. So if somebody specifically has an interest in approaching the schools or is an educator, we'd like to hear from you because we want to get uh, programs going. I've already spoken to one of the teachers off of McDowell down here. They have their own space, but they're interested in touring ours. We need someone to develop that. We also need someone who uh, wants to uh, create more workshops. So Doreen and I have talked about putting together a mini class on how to garden. But there are other workshops that can be done, how to plant a tree, how to do this, how to do that, how to do the other thing. And so uh, we need someone who is really interested in organizing small events uh, for the garden uh, so that we can have those things going on. So what I'm looking for is people to come in who want to organize events or education or coordinate with educational institutions so they can carry that mission forward. And also, if you want to work in the garden, there'll be a whiteboard put up. We discuss it will be either on the tool shed, which is this building here, above the bench, or possibly we'll put it up on the chicken coop. Okay, but there'll be a whiteboard there saying what you can do, et cetera, et cetera. And there'll be contact information for myself, Mark, and whoever else wants to be a coordinator. So that's what's going on with the garden. The garden party is going to be February 9th, so there's a, some work left to do. Uh, we'll be working weekends, so if you want to come, uh, you can reach out to me by my at email, or you could go to uh, garden at coronavirus.com, say, hey, I want to come, and I'll give you a job to do that will get us open. We have several planter boxes that are in the front. They're going to be planted with fruit trees. Uh, my next step is to design and find a home for Garden 2.0. So I'm looking for people who are interested in the garden and want to volunteer to come to the garden party on the 9th, meet one another, socialize, have some beer, listen to some music, discuss what they can do, when they can do it, and 
how we can make things work for these people who want to volunteer. All right, so that's the spiel on the garden. Any questions? Can you just show up? Yeah, that's the, my thought is, I, I don't want to complicate it and have a schedule and you're supposed to be here. The shed tenders, Jackie's not here, but she has a Facebook page where everybody's in contact and they talk to each other all the time and, you know, they have volunteer shifts and they can't make it, someone covers them. My hope is that we can uh, create pretty much the same thing. A very informal, cohesive group structure where you participate to the degree that you want to. What time is it on the night? Uh, it's going to be all day, uh, I think from like 10 to 2, well, I shouldn't say all day. It'll be a good chunk of the yeah. morning. I think it's going to be like from 10 to 2. So it's kind of just come as you are, come whenever you want to. It's not necessarily a need. Okay? Sort of an open house. Any other questions? That's a good question. Thank you. So we should have taken a before picture. <laughs> because the, the, this is phenomenal. What it was before was good because it was a lot of effort put into it. But... Um, it was basically a big cat that was lost. Back when everything was just in the ground and yeah. stuff? Uh, yeah. yeah. We had blocks, cement blocks that we painted. Mm -hmm. We still have them. Yeah, those blocks are still They're there. They're stacked right off to the left. There's a lot of stuff stacked off to the left. <laughs> yeah. But the fact that it's going to turn into a, uh, a learning opportunity for neighborhood kids mm -hmm. and giving back to the caring collection, that's, I think it's a really good thing that, that the neighborhood's doing. And, there's certainly a lot of interest in getting involved. Like um, having some direction is really going to be helpful. So if you if you are interested in coordinating or you know somebody that is, this is a good opportunity. Yeah, there'll be two things that come out of this. So redesigning Garden 2.0 is something that I've got to find a home for and then design it and figure out how to pay for it to get it installed because we spent money, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Most of this is portable. Uh, the second thing that I have to get off the ground, and if this is something you're interested in getting started, is little free gardens. I'm working off the idea, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to, I'm, I envision little plots street side mm -hmm. uh, all throughout the neighborhood that are either attended by the homeowner and whatnot, and we, we provide them with startup materials and help them get irrigation to it so it's automated so they don't have to drag hoses around. That is what I envision, now how that will come up, and I know but that's, I, I need someone to help with that too. So that's something that you say cool to, and show them on the night, so that uh, we can get uh, get something going. So, these little <coughs> gardens, and so who are they for? Or they're just like the little free libraries that okay. they're there. They're kind of a pick a tomato if you're walking to the by. Street. Exactly. The idea would be that they're there being tended by the homeowner just like a flower bed and hopefully, you know, people will be respectful of them. Yeah, hopefully the teens don't go take, take the tomatoes and throw them around. Teens do it too. Be sure to get your rain camera at the home tour. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now with that, if, there, uh, if there's no other questions, remember the 9th of February, I believe it's a Saturday, and uh, it's you know, two, three weeks before home tour, so uh, that means you can come to this, have a couple of weeks break, and then go to that. Talk to Bob Davis, he says he can provide music. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing anybody who's interested, just drop it. We'll have a pop up tent, we'll have some refreshments. I talked to uh, Jonathan and I'm told that we're going to get some beer. But not a lot, it's not a, it's not a blowout like <laughs> <laughs> casual thing. I see you're over six drinks, I'm going to have to like get it on home. <laughs> oh, what? I'm oh, sorry, I'm Irish. I see you over two drinks. <laughs> yes. Well, inside the house is, so the garden, the other part of the mission statement was to augment the community center. So the community center, for various reasons, hasn't really taken off the way we want. For the most part, it's an office and uh, a storage space. Uh, I think that's a fair description. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that anything's going to happen with it in the near future. Now, in looking for, I talked to Mike about this informally, in looking for Garden 2.0, I'm also looking for a site for Community Center 2.0. And maybe we can, when we're approaching these people who are landowners, come up with something that would be more than a storage space. Yeah, one, one of the things that, that some neighbors talked about was doing different events there, like doing a pantry exchange. If you have stuff in your pantry, you don't use it for a minute, just have one day to do that. Doing clothing exchanges. Yeah. But somebody has to take that on and do it. Because we That's, have that space, we just have to reserve it, right? Yeah. 
that but somebody has to do it. And and kind of in the neighborhood in the past couple of years, it's been there's about 30 people who do everything. The doers. And then, you know, or who, who are at least starters, right? We have to have other people say, hey, I really want to do this. And then we just make it happen. Because mm -hmm. I think Michael and I think the board is super open to new ideas. Yeah, no, I mean, we would love having I've got a bunch of people that are interested in starting a print shop. I haven't approached Michael about it, but I'd like to get inside of one of those spaces, if possible, one of the rooms. But I don't know that that's an actual going proposition. Well, I don't. So, if you think so. there's a kitchen there, so I'm about cooking. There's not a kitchen there. Oh, the kitchen's gone? There's a sink. Okay. Well, there's, there's, there's no stove. There's no stove. And that's what makes the kitchen a kitchen. Now, we, we originally envisioned uh, an outdoor cooking space, but we decided because of various issues, to scrap the big, uh, you know, what's that big Very palace nice. with that guy? Pizza oven? No, it's in India. Everybody, Taj Mahal. 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 We decided to abandon the whole Taj Mahal shade structure slash outdoor classroom because of various concerns. <coughs> We're going to expand some of the garden, we'll have some in-ground garden beds and small gathering space. No, someone has a stove. We'll put a stove in. Okay. okay. I mean, there's opportunities there. Again, if everyone has to come on out. And, um, yeah, you can, I mean, we can open up the whole thing. You can walk through the, mm -hmm. the, the, the I call it the center, but it's a little tiny house. It's a typical corner out of home. It's very tiny inside, but it's usable space. And, and it's been, like, we went in a painted, and we put in furniture and artwork, and so there's places to sit in there. <coughs> yeah. We go in there and hang out all the time when we're not working on the garden. Probably the same. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks for guys' attention. Thank you,
ad hoc meeting tonight. So. I have a quickie. Yes. So, welcome to Trellis's My Little Stomping Grounds. I'm Michael. I'm your commercial corridor coordinator for McDowell Road, part of the revitalization project. So, uh, thanks for coming down. I was happy to host you. And in April, I'm putting together some kind of crazy arch rededication event, and I'm going to make it as big as I'm going to try and close down part of McDowell Road past 16th to 18th and do food trucks and music and other stuff. Uh, maybe asking you guys for advice, but uh, be on the lookout for that. I'm excited. This is going to be a yearly event as well to support the uh, Merchants Association, which we're really trying to... My goal is to only be here for a few years to support them, to, to make sure the merchants can do whatever they want to do and, and have all the support they need. Uh, of course, people shopping always helps, so that's my little shout-out. Hello. Is the story of the arch? Did no. we talk about it? Okay. Yeah. So the, the, you can correct me on this, but that was a, a, an art installation, I forget the artist's name. Michelle Stuhl. Okay. Stuhl. Stuhl, Stuhl yeah. And it's yeah. supposed to be picket fences, as I understand. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, she said it's whatever you want it to be, but I like it's a it's a deconstructed picket fence with open arms. You know, it's not stay out of my neighborhood, it's we we welcome you. And so that's what Coronado really is. We, we welcome you. And so it's also a gateway to downtown Phoenix, just like Melrose. So it's a gateway arch. So. <coughs> what I remember uh -huh. from my history is that, that McDonald used to be the main thoroughfare into downtown. Yes. So and it was the first shopping district outside of downtown in the, in the late uh, 40s and 50s. Hence the Miracle Mile, right? That's what it was called. And everybody shopped here. And, We'll make it that again, so. It was the end where the streetcar, at the corner of right. Sam, the streetcar got to the end of the turnaround. Oh, wow. Like the, other way. the streetcar tracks mm -hmm. were still at the Sam. Oh, used cool. to trip on them. Oh, that's so out. cool. And then you have to go back in. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I want the streetcar back. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, if you ever have any questions about what's going on in McDowell, uh, ask Michael, Michael Kelly. I'm on Facebook. You see me posting a lot. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's going on with these uh, rides? Brewery. Not brewery. Oh, so, the story. distillery. Um, they are running against uh, several variance issues, and so the city, we've got folks um, that are Miracle Mile supporters in the city that are trying to help him circumvent needless uh, variances, and, and uh, it's still going, uh, not as fast as we'd like, but it's going to be a great distillery and restaurant. The front where we have um, the graffiti murals is going to be all glass, um, so it's it's pretty neat. And we're doing a mural project in April as well, so. Yeah. And Ryan's is just being there, Ryan's distillery is at the corner of McDowell and the 51 essentially. 20, yeah. yeah. And they come to the neighborhood meetings and show us their business plan. Mm -hmm. and they're very uh, open to feedback and yeah. partnership with the mm -hmm. the yeah. A lot of neat stuff happening. Uh, business owners buying their buildings. Um, Taco Chiwa has bought the two buildings next to them. They're expanding. Um, Smooth Brew just bought the property next to them. They're going to be expanding in the future as well. Uh, the building across the street where old Guanaquito used to be was bought by Harder Development, and she's got lots of great ideas, loves the community, uh, so really positive things are happening. Yeah. Cool. And thanks again for hosting. Yeah, of course, anytime. Give me, give me a heads up. <laughs> All right, so we're good. Anything else happening? All right, thanks for coming. We'll see you in February at the normal.